On this statute, it amended um, an intimate image. So if you now don't have to just send an intimate in image on the internet, you could text an image from one person to another. That was a um, kind of a loophole in the law before, and so this fixed that. At a recent local public safety coordinating council meeting, we heard from District Attorney Beth Heckert. She summarized several recent modifications to both major and minor laws in Oregon. Here's a quick overview of the changes that were made to laws that have a less significant impact on Jackson County. So although we're in the midst of the 2020 session, this is the legislation from 19. So 2020 is still a mystery. I'm hoping since it's a short session, they don't do a lot. Um, on criminal law stuff anyway. So they added additional people to be mandatory reporters. So already, you know, teachers, attorneys, doctors, um, <coughs> uh, police officers, a whole bunch of people are mandatory reporters. And what that means is you are required to report child abuse, whether you learn about it through your work or whether you learn about it through your personal life, it doesn't matter. If you learn about child abuse, you have a duty to report. So they've added a couple more people. Now animal control officers are added to the list of mandatory reporters and uh, anyone who's serving on a school district board member or a public charter school governing body member are now mandatory reporters. So every session it seems like they add a couple more people um, to this list and this took effect January 1 of 20. If you violate your mandatory reporting it's just a violation um, so it's like a traffic ticket. But, um, but it is, does make you a mandatory reporter if you serve in one of those roles 24 hours a day. Someone at the legislature has a sense of humor because Senate Bill 420 uh, was the marijuana set-asides. So that's a statute that just makes it easier for people to get rid of an old marijuana conviction. We aren't seeing a ton of people um, following through with this statute yet, but it just took effect the 1st of January. And there's really not many grounds at all for the prosecutor to object to them to set aside their conviction if they follow through, and they reduce the cost. So it used to be you had to submit your fingerprints to Oregon State Police with a fee. Now you don't have to do that if this is the conviction you're trying to set aside. Senate Bill 1002 put a limitation on prosecutors about negotiating um, certain types of leave. So you have a whole bunch of different kinds of leave. Everyone gets um, good time, uh, or everyone gets credit for time served. So if you've been in custody and you've served 60 days on your sentence that the judge ends up giving you, you get credit for that 60 days. So everyone gets that. But there are a whole bunch of other um, transitional leave, short-term transitional leave, alternative incarceration programs, and earn time that can change a person's sentence pretty significantly. Um, you heard more about this, the Mental Health House Bill 24. So this just really kind of tried to limit how many people we can send up to the state hospital and some extra community um, resources we should use before we send someone to the state hospital. It is very expensive to send someone to the state hospital. Um, and so they were trying to kind of curb counties from doing that. If someone uh, can't go up to the hospital, uh, then they can be held in jail, which is not the best place for people who are suffering from mental illness. And the court has to hold a hearing every seven days. And what we're seeing sometimes with those cases is they're just uh, statutorily timing out. So House Bill 3224 just required the district attorney in every county to post our policies on our website. So anyone in the community could look at our policies. And we don't have to comply with this until uh, December of 20, but we're well ahead of this curve and I think we'll be posting our policies probably within the next 30 days. On this statute, it amended um, an intimate image. So if you now don't have to just send an intimate in image on the internet, you could text an image from one person to another. That was a um, kind of a loophole in the law before and so this fixed that. Um, Senate Bill 577 uh, changed intimidation is what we used to call our bias crimes. Now it's called bias crime. So this is a, if you're motivated by um, what your perception is of the person's race, religion, gender, um, sexual orientation, all of those things. And so again, changing it to a bias crime, people felt like it, it, it described it more and people would understand what, more what it was than intimidation. And then this prostitution statute, we didn't, uh, this isn't a big issue for us either, but if um, a person calls 911 and during that prosecution, uh, they 
disclose that they were engaged in prosecution, prostitution or attempted prostitution, we can't prosecute them for that. 